Hi, I'm Gigi. I am an ex-Amazon senior leader and interview bar raiser. Welcome to part two of a two-part series on my top Amazon interview tricks and tips. If you haven't seen part one, don't worry. You can always watch it after this one. They don't need to be in chronological order. But when you watch it, I did record the series as a single part originally and then decided it was too long and split it into two. For this part two then, that'll make sense because you'll hear I'm coming to the end of what was originally quite a long video. So just a warning, I have also cut my hair quite significantly since I did that video. So please don't be shocked. Enjoy. Okay, so tons of information to remember in an Amazon interview. And one of the big challenges I hear from my candidates is like, how can I remember it all? I've got so many examples. I've got um, data points coming out of my nostrils. How am I going to remember them? So here's a big cheat that I love and so many of my candidates love. So first cheat is sticky notes. Right. You know, those little yellow stick it note things, um, use them and stick them around the frame of your screen. Now, obviously, if you've got a laptop, it's not quite so easy because it's all kind of clean and tiny and crowded. But if you're using kind of a big monitor, that can be really, really helpful is to put sticky notes all the way around your monitor with some key bits of information for you to get as a prompt. Now, clearly, you have to only use a few words and you probably have to write them quite big because what you don't want to be going is, oh, uh, let me just think about that for a second. Hmm. Clearly, you don't want to do that. But sticky notes can be really helpful. Another trick that I got from one of my candidates recently, which actually I've never heard of before, but I thought was genius, was this candidate was sitting in front of a wall. I have a window, so it'd be a bit harder in my office, but um, she had a wall in front of her. And what she had on her wall was giant posters, big, big posters with keywords and key data points on them that she could just refer to. So what she would do is, and I love this, it was something that she had to kind of train herself to, to do throughout the interview process, both when she was checking the data and when she wasn't checking data. So it all seemed natural. But what she would do is, let me think about that for a second. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've got a great example for you. Or uh, okay. And the result was, oh, hang on. I just need to, I need to think about that for a second. What were my metrics? Right. Okay. Yes. I remember now. Blah, blah, blah. So clearly you've got to practice. You need to make sure you've written these things in big enough letters so that you can read them. But that's a very, very smart tip to help you, um, outsource your cognitive load, I suppose, and get it documented without the somewhat uncomfortable situation where if you've got kind of physical notes in front of you, you know, flipping pages and go, oh, hang on a second, that never looks good. Okay, I say that and then I do it all the time. Ah, how embarrassing. <laughs> but you're not interviewing me, right? I'm not looking for a job, not today anyway. All right, so where else are we going to go? Here's the next one. And by the way, these are all a bit random, but they're some of my favorite, favorite tips over the many thousands of hours of interviewing um, candidates and getting feedback from my own candidates in the Amazon Interview Wiz Academy. So number five is about follow-up questions. So you're all out there practicing your stories, coming up with narratives that you hope will really speak to the leadership principles. But when you get into interview, and this will be particularly a challenge if you haven't done any mock interviews, is someone is going to ask you follow-up questions. They might wait until the end of the whole interview and have a list that they've written down through the interview or typed up through the interview and let fire them at you. Or they might do what I do, which is I tend to interrupt people and say, oh, hang on a second. Can I just get some clarification and do follow up questions there and then in the moment? But you have to be prepared that anything that you say in your story is fair game for someone to press the flesh on, I think is the term that Amazon uses quite frequently. It's a bit vile, actually. I don't like the, I've got a visual mind. And the minute I say press the flesh, it's like, Ooh. but anyway, right. So it's fair game. So write your story and then review your own story and ask yourself, what questions might I ask myself if I was given this example in an interview? It's very similar to the concept of FAQs, frequently asked questions, which is something Amazon does at the end of every single document. When someone's written a document, they try and anticipate 
what might somebody ask me about this document that I haven't captured? I might not necessarily want to put it in my core document, but I do want to be prepared in case anybody asks it of me. So do that. That's my next best favorite tip, right? Write your story and then build yourself a set of FAQs. What would I might ask myself if I was being given this example? And then you might choose to put it in your story because you realize, oh, actually, that's a really important thing to put in the story. I can't believe I forgot it. Or you might not want to put it in your story, but you have it kind of metaphorically in your back pocket in case anybody asks it of you. So that's my next best one. Do think about and prepare for follow up questions. Number six now. Yeah, number six. Okay, so this is all about your interviewer. So you'll hear there are different philosophies, I suppose, is the word about what an interview really is. You know, I see so many coaches out there talking about interviews as if it's some kind of a war or a battlefield or some kind of game of chess and strategy where you're trying to dominate or your interviewer is trying to dominate you, blah, blah, blah. I really don't kind of subscribe to that philosophy at all. And Amazon interview, and certainly Amazonians are trained to conduct interviews like this, is it's a dialogue. It's an exploration where they're trying to get the evidence that they need from you to help them make a decision. So part of their job is to help you draw or offer up that evidence. So your interviewer's frame of mind is really important going into the interview. You want them to be settled. You want them to be comfortable. You want them to be relaxed. And one of the challenges about interviewing when you are an Amazonian is it's on top of your day job. Most Amazonians, you know, if you're an L5 or above, chances are you're doing one, maybe two interviews a week. And you're very likely to be doing a role, this is the truth of most Amazon roles, is you're busy. Very rarely that you ever have kind of, oh, I wonder what I'm going to do next in an Amazon role. There's always work to do. So chances are your interviewer is literally entering your chime, having just got off another chime about something completely different. And their head is not anywhere close to being in the game, in the right frame of mind for interviewing. So the next big tip really is about Help your interviewer just settle into the room, right? A little bit of warm up, which is, hi, how are you doing? How's your day going? Uh, You know, it's lovely and sunny here. Just kind of some general human meandering chat type stuff, just literally a couple of seconds. But it will just give your interviewer, and I've been there so many times, I promise you so many times where I need to get my head out of the last meeting that I had, which was about the underperformance of a huge campaign or whatever, because I'm a marketer, into the space of, okay, I'm interviewing somebody, I'm interviewing them about this role, I'm focusing on dive deep and hire and develop the best. I read their CV about three days ago, I have to remember, oh, sorry, resume, British, I have to remember the context of this. So anything that you can do to just give your interviewer a few seconds to settle in and be able to answer to you, answer your questions with one part of their brain very simply, whilst the other part of their brain is doing all of the things that I just described, I promise you will make a big difference to the whole experience for you and the interviewer. So that's my next big tip. So surprise, um, I have actually decided I need to turn this into a three-part series. Who knew? So if you found this insightful and you'd like to help other candidates get access to this type of content, then please do put a little comment in the comments box or give me a little thumbs up. Now what you need to do is click on this link here and go and grab yourself one of my free Amazon Interview Wiz Academy Customer Obsession Masterclasses. Watch that and you will nail every single customer obsession question asked of you at your Amazon interview. Or if you'd like to do that later, check out this video here for more great Amazon interview bar raiser tips on interview strategy.